A lawmaker representing Adiato North South Federal Constituency, Kenga Gochinyuri, has been sacked by the Imo State National and State House of Assembly Election Petitions Tribunal. The three member panel of the tribunal, which conducted its proceedings in Arawa State, held that the House of Representatives member was not validly nominated by the PDP in the election that was held on the 25th of February. The tribunal, in its lead judgment, directed INEC to conduct supplementary polls and 55 polling units where elections were not held. It held that the PDP and its candidates should be excluded from the supplementary election. Well, for more on this development, let's speak with the lawmaker in the eye of the storm, Mr. Ikenga Ogochinyere joins us live from our Abuja studio. It's good to have you join us on the news at this time. Thank you for having me. Well, is it okay to call you a former member of the House of Representatives since you'll be telling us why the supplementary election has been ordered in 55 polling units? Not at all. I'm still a valid and strong member of the National Assembly, the 10th House of Representatives. What happened was uh, the judgment of the, uh, the National and State Assembly at Tribuna. We still have the appeal court, and uh, so I'm still a, a sitting member of the House of Representatives as we talk. If you say that you're still a member of the House, but the court, the tribunal has ordered, uh, citing ex um, examples or citing issues from the party primaries, wouldn't you say that that already kicks you out of your seat as a member of the House of Representatives? No, 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 but you should know that after the first tribunal, the right of appeal will be exercised and within the next few days, and then after the court of appeal, before you can have a final decision on the matter. But the most important thing here is that this is uh, a huge setback for our quest for a strong constitutional governance and judicial uh, transparency. What uh, Justice Anthony Oloto uh, Akpovi and Usman Kudu and Ibrahim Mohammed did today is winding the, the clock back because you have an election that held in compliance with the provisions of the law that was affirmed by the, uh, 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 the Federal High Court, the Appeal Court, and even the Supreme Court, challenged by the same people that came before the tribunal and on the same ground of issue of primary. And now we have finished this election and we won. Not only that we won, we won landslide. The young man that went to court won one pulling unit out of 346. And now he's seeking for a way to reap where he did not sow. But the most important thing is I want you to, to go back to the judgment of the Federal Court of Appeal, the Court of Appeal that was delivered in the case of P2B and Bolatini. And I will read a part for you that the position of the law has always been that no political party can challenge the nomination of the candidate of another political party. The position did not change in Section 28514C of the Constitution. No matter how pained or disgruntled a political party is with the way and manner another political party is conducting or has conducted its affairs concerning the nomination of candidates for any election, it must keep moon and remain an onlooker for a largely local standard to challenge such nomination in court. Justice Akbovi is aware of this. There have been numerous judgments, not just in the case of P2B and Tinubu and the one involving PDP and Shetima. There have been the one in uh, Plato. There have been about almost 25 rulings in the last few days, up to up to yesterday. And even in the same National Assembly Election Petition Tribunal, in the same Nasrawa, the case of other members of the PDP that won the House of Rep, which was also affirmed, the primary that held on the same venue, was also affirmed by this tribunal. So it was so shocking for me to be single that, and then all you could find is to say, oh, the primary that produced me did not comply with the provision of the law. Did you not hear the appeal say that every qualification must be based on the express provisions of the Constitution? So where do you introduce this thing that is unknown to now say that because of a pre-election issues that you are avoiding a mandate, a mandate that is so clean and popular, an election that I was not even anywhere near Imo State, Despite all the boasting by those of them that he stopped me, I was outside the state. My people still delivered victory. I still defeated them. And his candidate won one pulling unit out of 346 pulling units. Even his wife lost his pulling unit. The father-in-law lost. Everybody that has anything to associate with them lost their pulling unit. And then all of a sudden, we get to this particular point. And all you want to do is to use an issue of pre-election to void a clean mandate that was given unanimously to me by our people. So it's very shocking. Mr. Ogunchir, I would like to ask you, why are you picking, because it seems like you've mentioned the, gov the name of the governor. Why is it that you're picking on the governor? It's the court that has given this judgment. 
I'm not picking on him, but you watch him where he said, I cannot win an election, I'm not popular, and so on and so forth. So all the things I've been saying, or even the ones he have been making in comments that they will retrieve the mandate. So we have seen it. Is this how to retrieve a mandate? By using a pre-election issue? So this judgment is, 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 unknown to, is unknown to our judicial process. This judgment is unpopular. This judgment is even undemocratic because it went on issues that superior courts have made, have made final and express finding on just because you don't want, you don't like Andy King. Let me, let me say okay. this clearly. The reason why there is... I was going to ask you, but can you tell us why the supplementary election, you know, has been ordered in 55 polling units? Then coming to that, the 56 area he's talking about is operational headquarters of EASN and unknown government. We are our next staffs, we are kidnapped. Where even our campaign managers and women leaders were beheaded at night to election. We are our next task, we are kidnapped, and electoral elections did not hold in some of those polling. Some had the accreditation and voting, but they took away the material. So there was no election in those areas because of insecurity. And apart from that, the remaining 302 were election held. It won only one polling unit. And that area is also my strong. Even if you hold the election there 100 times, I will claim victory by the will of our people and God. And that is why you see this, you know, this uh, judicial rigmarole running around of saying I cannot participate in the run because you know I am leading you with almost over 13,000 votes. So I don't even need to go to election. I will sit right here in your studio and the election will hold and I will still win it. So that's why you see somebody is trying to exclude me from that. And you need to also know that the lead, the, the margin of lead, I have no relationship with somebody who came third in an election. So even if there was supposed to be a, a rerun, any issue, it has to be with the person that came second. The person that it's, came I'm second afraid that we don't have so much time to take your prayers. You might have to take this discussion. You might have to take this discussion back to the courtroom um, lawmaker, or should I say former lawmaker, Ikenga Gochinira. Thank you so much for speaking to us on TVC News at 10. A point of uh, correction. Yes, thank you.